months, all we have been doing is get online every day at 8.30 and say, okay, market is going up, let's buy more, right? <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm just, this is almost reaching the point where we are all getting sick of this narrative. I mean, a lot of people are sick of this narrative narrative because uh, people are shorting at every level and market is still going up. So this is in a way becoming the most hated bull market of all times. And I can say this with conviction because um, I've, I've seen bull market for quite a some time. In fact, I've even been active in bull markets of, uh, you know, I've seen the 2017, 2007 cup peak. I've seen 2016 cut run, a lot of things, but nobody hated it. <laughs> bull market with so much of a vengeance but anyway let's get started what do we do here we look at charts we look at open interest data we look at uh, fidi data and our premise is that if we can see what the big guys are doing we don't have to look at whatever it is that news is feeding us right we can uh, analyze market data independently we can see what the big guys are doing and we can uh, do what um, um, uh, the other guys are doing without really applying too much of our analysis. Um, thank you, Anjana, for the comment. Rock Rock, my native. My native is a place called Kori Code in Kerala, if you've heard of that. Uh, Vasco da Gama came there in 1498. Great place to start colonization. Although they didn't really start colonization, that great place to explore India, I guess. Land in India. So, uh, so anyway, uh, let's uh, target 18900. Let's see, let's see. So, let's get started, right? Um, first thing, let's share... <clears throat> Let me share. Yar, Shreyas, I'm so sorry. I forgot that mail. Today, right after this thing, I'm going to get on my inbox and reply to that mail. Uh, the internet is unbelievably slow today. So, not internet. Yeah. I think this is... Get it shared? Yeah, awesome. It's shared. So... Yesterday we talked about this, right? In fact, it's 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 fun. So we talked about three cases. We talked about a case where Nifty will uh, go like this, come back and bounce up. We said there could also be a case where Nifty can go like this, come back like this, consolidate here maybe and break out. And we said there's a third possibility where Nifty can uh, crack down below this level and go like this. And in the last two episodes, we have been saying this red fall possibility is almost unlikely. Either the yellow will happen or the blue will happen. Looks like the blue has happened. And we had also said that if day before yesterday, there was like a dip in US markets. We said if Nifty stabilized despite the dip in US market, that will be a very nice opportunity to buy. So that played out. If you were long yesterday on the doji, this would have given you almost a 100 plus point move and it looks like we have more to come right because now we are we have broken that uh, trend line and we are back into that trend line zone so let me just quickly show what i mean by this trend line um i mean we have been showing this a lot of times but if those of for those who are new to you know kya lag raha market as we call it as others who are also creating ripoff formats also call it <laughs> sorry <laughs> Couldn't resist that. Yep. So you can see this, right? Uh, this has broken out of this trend line. This has broken out of this downward trending channel. It has also, um, if you look at long-term trend line, you can see that, yeah, this old trend line, this is getting broken. So basically, and also 50 DMA is above, 50 weekly moving average is above, 200 weekly moving average is above uh, 200, uh, 50, 100, 200 in that order is uh, showing bullish. If you look at daily time frame also, Nifty is above all moving averages, uh, 100, 250, everything. So overall, it looks like a very bullish chart setup, right? So chart is definitely asking you to buy. See, even... If you don't have the conviction to buy it, you should have the conviction to buy at this level, first of all, right? If you don't have the conviction to buy and you are saying, Ki boss, this is a trap. When it's a trap, hai, tab dekha jayega, yaar. let's at, at least ride till then, right? See, I know a lot of people don't participate in the last leg of the market rally, thinking that, Ki, you know what, what Nifty is planning to do is, it is going to go up some more and it is going to trap me and then fall down, right? People think that it will go like this, it yeah, if that happens, let we'll see it here, right? We'll put a tight stop loss here. Don't not participate in a rally because you think it's a trap. For all you know, it will be a very long trap. Maybe it will go to 19,500. Who knows, right? But um, 
you should have uh, the conviction to participate in a rally when that rally happens. And when we are wrong, we'll put the put a stop loss and get out, right? When we die, we die. But I mean, if you are brave enough, we die once, right? If you are not brave enough, we'll die several times. It's like what Julius Caesar said. So, but what, no matter what you do, please don't short here because the last legs of a bull market can get really, really violent. The reason why I'm saying this is I also think this is going, not going to sustain maybe 19,000, maybe 20,000. It will give one last peak and it will just overturn. That's my, I mean, we have, for those of you who have been watching this program for a long time, you know that our theory has been that one last hurrah and then it will all uh, come, you know, tumbling down, right? But the point is that is going to be very violent. So if you're shorting, you're going to really, really get uh, backed out by the market. So please don't short, right? That is my uh, read on Nifty. Um, sorry, this is a wrong shortcut. Yeah, so again, back to um, this. Bank Nifty is also forming a temporary high. In fact, Bank Nifty is very, very close to the all-time high, which is, I don't know, maybe what, how much is, how, how far is all-time high from here? Perhaps like another... Uh, 800 points so i mean i uh, for, not 800 points maybe around 400 500 points a percent maybe right bank nifty is one percent away from all-time high so you can almost take it for granted that this is going to test the all-time high maybe it will have some retracement on the all-time high we don't know that but it looks like bank nifty is going to test the all-time high it doesn't make sense to short bank nifty either also one mistake which a lot of people do is they short the all-time high thinking that double top hair right please don't do that mistake because double top happens, like basically it's not a double top till it confirms. So, so I'll tell you what, right? This is a standard uh, trading advice. A lot of people short the market because they suspect there is a resistance there. You should not short the market because you think there is a resistance there. You should short the market only if there is a resistance there. So basically, let's say magnitude goes like this. Please don't short here at 44,000 because if yes for sure it might give a tiny dip like this or something and it can just go up and you'll be in big trouble because when an all-time high is broken right the short covering rally is going to be crazy so there's no point in uh shorting that of course it makes sense to short in one particular scenario so let's say bank nifty goes to this forty-four thousand number right uh let me just uh So let's say Bank Nifty goes to this 44,000 number, which is the all-time high, right? Let's say, you know, some candle gets formed, SA, like a green candle. And then you see something like this happening, right? Either a shooting star or let's say you see this happening, like a bearish engulfing or something. Then, of course, you can short. But please don't short here just because it's an all-time high and it is testing it. Resistance is not to be shorted when it is hitting. Resistance is to be shorted only if it confirms. So basically, when you get a confirmation that there's a resistance there in terms of a shooting star, in terms of a bearish engulfing, or in terms of a bearish harami cross or something, then you can, of course, short it. But please don't short it here at 44,000 when the all-time high hits. There's a possibility that we can see another breakout in Bank Nifty. Bank Nifty might just break out and go, you know, outside this territory. And that uh, short covering rally uh, can be very, very uh, crazy. So please don't uh, go for that, right? Uh, so somebody is saying, uh, uh, yeah, uh, once again. Gap trade is saying made 1.4 lakhs because of your, no, it is not because of my analysis, it's because of your bed sizing and conviction. Analysis uh, Anyway, so let's go to uh, dollar. Dollar, we have been talking about this hypothesis for a long time. It is showing weakness. Every day it is showing weakness, but slightly what is worrying me is this. I'll just show you what is worrying me. In, in futures chart, right, dollar is actually forming a base here. So this base, which is getting formed here, right, it's a little bit of a worry for me, right? This base is not looking good. So I'm worried about this base forming around 8180. 
if it goes below this level it breaks at 8175 or something yes continued bullish bearishness but otherwise there is a possibility that dollar can bounce here so if you're short dollar now maybe you should reevaluate your short position maybe dollar can bounce because it's just stuck here right it's just stuck here forever so i'm going to be getting out of all short positions in dollar it's a it's a nice ride you know we were shorting somewhere around 80 to 80 territory it's a very nice ride uh, so maybe we can get out right so that's one now let's go to open interest data on nifty right this is a very clear open interest data although it is day one you can see there's enough open interest getting formed um, today a lot of call writing at 18200 sorry put writing at 18200 also overall 18200 is a towering support so it looks like 18200 pay we have support pcr is 0 0.8 which is kind of bullish like not outright bullish uh, it's better than neutral kind of bullish now let's go to fidi data right now fidi data today is expiry so it's day one hardly anything to say but they shorted you know 54000 puts they shorted 48000 calls net net slightly up plus 6k in terms of bullishness but i mean uh, i would call this neutral right this is not really bullish <clears throat> but <clears throat> bullish to neutral neutral mildly positive but if you look at this right this is actually not bad because the gap between red and green is very low so normally red is always more than green but when the gap is very little right if there are if there are the number of calls is like more than 80 percent of uh puts right so if you look at it there is around 2.6 lakh uh puts and there is around 2 l calls so this is almost like 75 percent of uh, or something close to number when you do uh, put by call right uh, rather call by puts right so that's not bad right there is there are enough calls in fact if you visually look at it they both look kind of same in terms of outstanding oi so this is bullish right this formation looks bullish so this is good now let's look at one more thing uh, if you look at futures this is positive of course bullish if you look at stocks, FIA, DIA both bought, so which means retail sold, I think, client sold rather. So 1800 crore net long, which is also bullish, but it's, um, of course, stock data is not to be interpreted for weekly derivative trading. And FIA index OI in futures has come to almost like zero. So if you look at it, right, to put things in perspective, if you look at long term data series on this, right um this is not good right because long time back fi used to be 100 100000 100k quantity uh, 200k quantity type short now it is almost zero so there's a clear trend reversal from fi in terms of how much they are shorting or longing right they are mostly neutral which is also good news so overall, my read on the market right now is market is likely to test all time high once more, <laughs> right? <clears throat> uh, uh, one gold trader is asking, uh, uh, how about every expiry one hour live trade? Yeah, honestly, my problem is, yeah, I have a day job, right? I have to, on the side, we are also, I mean, other than, you know, shit posting on Twitter and doing this analysis and doing taking some trade side trades, we also run an option trading platform on the side called Sensible. So that kind of takes up most of my time, which is why, I mean, I would love to do that, right? If you ask me, uh, live trading is the, if I could uh, convict with conviction trade and show it on a YouTube live stream, and if others could follow and make money, I would say that is the best use of, uh, you know, somebody's uh, um, ability to trade, right? But unfortunately, uh, it's a little difficult to you know run a startup and to do all that but we are planning something else we are thinking we'll make verified by sensible live positions so you can see i mean there are a lot of good traders who are trading uh, and uh, doing verified by sensible you can actually see their live positions uh, maybe that's probably better than me doing it because they are full-time traders <laughs> so so yeah so anyway my verdict on the market is that it's likely to test uh, uh, all time high once again so i would look to uh, stay long with bull call spreads or even naked call buys or futures uh, no matter what 
I don't think I will be looking to short this market. Bipin is asking, is change in OI data sensible real time or not? So Bipin, uh, the deal is NSE updates OI data only once in three minutes. For some contract, they update once in a minute. So we um, uh, kind of, uh, you know, uh, uh, we kind of uh, uh, update at, uh, you know, once in three minutes, that is the update frequency we have because NSE update is that. But I think there's some glitch because of which some contracts get updated at five minutes, but we'll fix it to three minutes. As soon as exchange updates, we'll update, right? Uh, what else, what else, what else, what else, what else, what else, right? So that is our analysis for today. Let me just see if there's any news or events or something. Uh, this is, okay, sorry. So one important thing. Let's see if there are any uh, events lined up for this week. Federal Reserve, China manufacturing, inflation data on 10th May. So there's nothing till uh, non-farm payrolls is happening on 5th May, that is tomorrow. This is actually a pretty important release, but I don't know how important it is this time, especially with, uh, you know, FOMC saying they are pausing and all that. Um, and what else is there? Is there any lesson which the boys have come up with? Today's market meme. <laughs> I don't know. I think this is yesterday's market meme. This doesn't look like today's market meme at all. Because this, whatever this is, this sticker is gone. And what is today's learning? I hope it's today's learning. Yeah, if the market is in a range for the first half and then crosses day high or day low in the second half, we can expect a big move. It's a fair point. We saw market breaking out today, right? So that is our, so basically if the market is, you know, in a tight zone for the entire day and suddenly it starts giving a volume breakout candle, you can expect that uh, you can, it can go to a new high like it happened today. So it's not necessary that if you're, if you're, if you don't have enough, you know, conviction or courage to participate in the rally, you don't have to, but at least make sure that you're not shorting the market in such occasions. Or, I mean, basically, if it's a breakout upside, don't short the market. If it's a breakout downside, please don't long the, uh, long the market. Uh, best thing is if you can trade this kind of a breakout with a tight stop loss, nothing like that. But otherwise, please don't go against the market, right? That's our market lesson for today. Uh, today's market was totally against option taking data. Not entirely, right? Arjun is saying head and shoulder. I look at that. Okay, so that is our analysis for today. We'll see you again. Uh, Varun is asking few nerds on JP Nagar bear cartel. There is no JP Nagar bear cartel. Uh, who is Siddharth? It's sensible. Siddharth is our CTO. Uh, right. Uh, too many questions today. We'll try to answer them in due time. Anyway, that's our analysis for today. We'll see you again tomorrow. Thank you so much for joining. As usual, please take care and keep.